dear students now let us learn chapter 3 in biozoology that is tissue level of organization what are tissues tissues are the group of cells that are similar in structure and perform a common and related functions so i repeat group of cells that are similar in structure to perform common and related functions are called as tissues tissues are considered as the living fabrics like our dress material fabrics tissues are helping to mold and form our body tissues are organized in specific proportion and patterns to form organs hence tissues are called as living fabrics they are organized in a specific proportion and patterns so tissues are living fabrics what is histology study of these tissues is called as histology so we can study the tissues by taking the thin slices or cross section of these tissues and observing under the microscope the study of tissues is done there are four basic types of animal tissues they are epithelial tissue connective tissue muscular tissue and nervous tissue this is the mind map of animal tissues so animal tissues are classified broadly into epithelial tissue muscular tissue connective tissue and nervous tissue epithelial tissues are again classified based on their structure and function as squamous epithelium cuboidal epithelium columnar epithelium ciliated epithelium and glandular epithelium So squamous epithelial cells are flattened in structure with the centrally placed nucleus cuboidal epithelium the cells will be cubical in shape columnar epithelium they will be tall and pillar like the cells will be tall and pillar like and if they are having the cilia on a, on its free end then they are called ciliated epithelium and the glandular epithelial cells will function for secretion they will secrete either enzymes or hormones for the body and so they become glandular epithelium the second type of tissue is called muscular tissue it is again classified into striated non striated and cardiac based on the structure and their function connective tissue connective tissue is again classified into areolar tissue dense regular connective tissue adipose tissue skeletal tissue and fluid vascular tissues dense regular connective tissue comprises of tendons and ligaments the skeletal tissue consists of cartilage and bone and this cartilage is again classified into three types namely hyaline fibrous and calcified the vascular tissue consists of the blood and the lymph finally we have the fourth nervous tissue what are epithelial tissues sheet of cells covering the body surface and the body cavity they will be on the surface of the organ as well as inside the cavity lining the lumen of the organs it is called as epithelial tissue and they perform various functions like protection absorption filtration excretion secretion and sensory reception epithelial tissue is classified based on their structure like simple epithelium compound epithelium and glandular epithelium simple epithelium comprises of squamous epithelium cuboidal epithelium columnar epithelium ciliated epithelium and pseudo stratified epithelium whereas compound epithelium consists of stratified compound epithelium and transitional compound epithelium and thirdly glandular epithelium simple epithelium it is comprising of single layer of cells and they are found in the organs of absorption secretion and filtration it is again divided into squamous cuboidal columnar ciliated pseudo stratified and glandular epithelium squamous epithelium single layer of thin flattened cells with irregular boundaries so this is the structure of the squamous epithelium you can see the single layer of thin flattened cells with irregular boundaries and they are located in the kidneys alveoli of lung lining of the heart and the blood vessels their function is 
diffusion boundary they perform as the boundary for the substance to diffuse in and out of them and filter they will not allow certain substances molecules to move about by filtration cuboidal epithelium this uh, cuboidal epithelium is made up of single layer of cube shaped cells and they are located in the kidney surface of the ovaries secretory parts of some glands and their function is secretion as well as absorption columnar epithelium it is made up of single layer of pillar like cells you can see the elongated pillar like cells here and they will have the oval shaped nuclei at the base of the cells and it is located in the digestive tract of the stomach to rectum and goblet cells of the digestive tract are modified cuboidal epithelial cells which will secrete the mucus in the digestive tract the cuboidal cells in the small intestine are modified with microvilli for absorption functions they secrete enzymes mucus etc and they help in the absorption of the digested food next is ciliated columnar epithelium it is made up of single layer of tall pillar like cells with oval shaped nuclei at the base and they possess the cilia at their free end they are located on the lining of the small bronchioles bronchioles of the our lungs and female reproductive organ in the fallopian tube and uterus their function is to propel the mucus by the ciliary action pseudo stratified epithelium so here you can see the unequal sized columnar cells they are of unequal size uh, though they are arranged in single layer they appears to be multi layer actually single layer of cells because of their unequal size they seem to be multi layered and due to their position of the nuclei they look as if many cells are arranged one above the other and so they are called as the pseudo stratified epithelium and they are of two types with some are with cilia and some cells are without cilia the cells with the cilia are found in the upper respiratory tract that is trachea of our body and the cells without cilia are found in the lining of epididymis and urethra of male reproductive organ their functions are protection absorption and secretion this is the microscopic image of the squamous epithelial cell microscopic image of columnar epithelium and this is the microscopic image of the ciliated columnar epithelium you can see the cilia very clearly here and microscopic image of cuboidal epithelium microscopic image of ciliated pseudo stratified epithelium glandular epithelial cells some of the cuboidal as well as columnar epithelial cells get modified and in they involve in secretion they secrete the enzymes and the hormones for the body and such epithelial cells are called as glandular epithelium glandular epithelial cells are classified into exocrine gland or ducted glands or endocrine glands and ductless glands the type of glandular epithelium based on the number of cells they may be unicellular glandular epithelium goblet cells in the intestine and multicellular glandular epithelium example salivary glands types of multicellular epithelial cells based on the structure it is classified into simple glandular epithelial cells and compound glandular epithelial cells based on the secretory units they are classified into tubular alveolar and tubulo alveolar epithelial cells based on the mode of secretion they are classified into mirocrine halocrine and apocrine compound epithelium it is made up of multi layered cells their main role is to provide the protection against the chemical and the mechanical stress they are found in skin pharynx inner lining of our salivary and the pancreatic ducts etc the types of compound epithelium are stratified squamous epithelium stratified cuboidal epithelium stratified columnar epithelium and transitional epithelium this is the microscopic picture of stratified squamous epithelium this is a stratified columnar epithelium you can see the pillar shaped cells stratified cuboidal epithelium the cells are of cuboidal shape this is the transitional epithelium junctions what are these junctions the cells of the epithelium are held together with little intercellular material and they are called as 
junctions and these junctions provide both structural and functional link between the cells they not only bind them together structurally they also act as a functional link between the cells there are uh, three types of junctions namely tight junction huddering junction and gap junction the tight junction help to stop the substance from leaking across the tissue it will not allow the substance to pass through this junction whereas the adhering junction performs like a cementing material and keep the neighboring cells together and in the gap junction it will facilitate the cells to communicate with each other by connecting the cytoplasms of the adhering cells and they transfer ions and small molecules and sometimes big molecules also from one cell to another from one cell to another cell and they transfer very rapidly also next tissue is called connective tissue connective tissues develop from mesoderm and they are widely distributed in our body and they are the most abundant tissues of our body all the connective tissue consist of three things namely fibers ground matrix and cells and we have three types of fibers in our connective tissue they are collagen fibers elastin fibers and reticulate fibers so what are the functions of the connective tissue they help to bind they help in binding supporting protecting act as an insulation material and also helps in the transportation connective tissues classification now connective tissues are broadly classified into loose connective tissue dense connective tissue and specialized connective tissue loose connective tissue is classified into areolar tissue adipose tissue and reticular tissue let us see the loose connective tissue first loose connective tissue the cells and the fibers are loosely arranged in the matrix they are loosely arranged in the matrix example areolar tissue adipose tissue and reticular tissue areolar tissue they are found beneath the skin just below the skin and they contain fibroblast cells they contain fibroblast cells macrophage cells and mast cells they support the framework for epithelium and they act as a reservoir of water and salt for the surrounding tissue hence they are called as tissue fluid so it's a important question what is tissue fluid areolar tissue act as a reservoir for water and the salts for surrounding tissue hence the areolar tissue is called as tissue fluid next one is adipose tissue in the loose connective tissue it is located beneath the skin that is in the subcutaneous region and they are also found surrounding the organs like kidneys eyeball and heart it contains fat cells fat cells are otherwise called adipose cells and these cells occupy nearly 90% of the adipose tissue these cells helps to store excess nutrients in the form of fat and so they are highly vascularized they are supplied with blood vessels to bring the excess nutrients to this tissues type of adipose tissue adipose tissue is classified into white adipose tissue and brown adipose tissue white adipose tissue has less number of mitochondria and they store the nutrients whereas the brown adipose tissue will have more number of mitochondria and they will be oxidized to produce the heat they heat the blood stream to make the body warm reticular connective tissue these connective tissues are found in the lymph nodes spleen and bone marrow and so they contain lymphocyte they mostly contain lymphocyte they are similar to the areolar tissue but they have high reticular cells and so it is reticular connective tissue the next type of connective tissue is dense connective tissue dense connective tissue is again classified into dense regular connective tissue and dense irregular connective tissue the dense irregular connective tissue contains two types of connective tissue that is white fibers connective tissue and yellow elastic connective tissue white fibers connective tissue consists of cords called tendons and sheets yellow elastic connective tissue consists of cords called ligaments and sheets 
Dense connective tissue is also called as connective tissue proper. In connective tissue proper, there are three types of things. They are fibers, fibroblast and matrix and they are compactly packed. Types of connective tissue are dense regular connective tissue, dense irregular connective tissue and elastic connective tissue. Dense regular connective tissue. Here the fibers bundles are arranged parallel to each other. In they are arranged in parallel rows. And most of the fibers are collagen fibers and a few may be elastic fibers. Fibroblast cells are found in the dense connective tissue. Dense connective tissue is found in the tendons and ligaments and tendons will attach the skeletal muscles to the bones. Ligaments will help to attach bone to one bone to other bone. Dense irregular connective tissue and they are made up of collagen bundles of collagen fibers along with few elastic fibers and they are arranged irregularly and so it is dense irregular connective tissue. Fibroblast cells are the major type of cells present in them and it provides strength to withstand the tension exerted in various direction and provides structural support for the body. Structural strength to the body. It is found in the skin, leathery dermis, fibrous membranes of kidney, bone, cartilage, muscles, joints etc. Elastic connective tissue, they contain high amount of elastin fibers and the, it will allow recoiling of the tissue after stretching and they are found in the walls of the arteries, the ligaments of vertebral column and bronchi. That's why we are able to stretch and bend our bodies and the blood flows through the walls of the arteries. When they flow, they will expand and after which they will contract. So stretching and contraction of the tissue happens because of this elastin fibers. Next we have specialized connective tissue in that we have cartilage, bone and blood. First we shall see the cartilage. The intracellular material of cartilage is solid and playable and it resists compression. So we can bend our body with the help of the cartilage. Cells of this tissue consist of chondrocytes. The cells of this tissues are called as chondrocytes. And they are present in a small cavities within the matrix which is called as lacunae. And most of this cartilage present in the vertebrate embryos are replaced. Most of the cartilage present in the vertebrate embryos are replaced by the bones in their ad adult stage. Cartilage are present in the tip of our nose, outer ear pinna, ear joints, between the adjacent bones of our vertebral column, limbs and hands in adult. Bone. bone is a specialized connective tissue and bones are the hard tissues with non-playable round substance. Non-playable they cannot bend or they are not flexible. They are, they are made up of hard tissues and they are rich in calcium, salt and collagen fibers. The cells of the bone tissue are called as osteocytes and there are spaces between these cells which are called as lacunae. The bones form the structural framework of our body. It supports and protects the internal organs. It is involved in the locomotion. It, it also serves for the weight bearing function of the body. Bone marrow becomes a site for the production of the blood cells also. Blood cells of our body. Next we have the blood. Blood is a fluid connective tissue. Blood is composed of plasma and formed elements. And these formed elements are the cells, RBC, WBC and the platelets. And plasma is the liquid part of the blood. And formed elements are the solid part of the blood. Blood acts as a transport medium for carrying the respiratory gases, nutrients, waste etc. throughout our body. Next we have the muscular tissue. Muscles are the organs of locomotion. And each muscle is made up of many long cylindrical fibers which are arranged parallel to each other. And these fibers are made up of many fine threads called myofibrils. And muscle fiber contract and relax to bring out the movement in our body. Muscular tissue is classified into striated muscle, non-striated muscle and cardiac muscles. Striated are skeletal muscles. They are found attached to the skeletal bones. 
and so they are called as skeletal muscles they have striations and so they are called as striated muscle and each muscle fiber is covered by a tough connective tissue and these muscles are voluntary in action example for this muscular tissue is muscles of bicep our tricep chest muscles and thigh muscles smooth muscles they are found in the internal organs they make up the internal organs and they do not have striations on them and they have the tapering ends both the ends will be tapering and middle it there will be it will be bulged and will have the nucleus in the middle the cell junctions hold them together and they are surrounded by the connective sheath and these muscles are involuntary in function involuntary in action their function is not under our control the contraction and relaxation of these muscles are not under our control the example for this is muscles of blood vessel stomach and intestine third one is cardiac muscle they are found exclusively in the heart the cell junctions will hold these muscle cells together and they communicate through these junctions involving in transmitting the impulses and they have striations and they are involuntary in action finally we have the neural tissue neural tissue is made up of neurons so this is a neuron or the nerve cell they are highly excitable cells nervous tissue helps to control our body action they play a very important role in overall body coordination overall control of our body coordination and when it when a neuron is suitably stimulated an electrical disturbance is generated which will travel along the plasma membrane and this disturbance is arrived at the neuron endings and which will trigger and causes the stimulation or inhibition in the adjacent neurons and other cells of our body apart from this neuron the nervous tissue also contain neuroglial cell which support and protect neurons